Sex in paradise. Now what's wrong with that? I don't know. You have to tell me. Now, atheists, they don't believe in religion. So they just attack the concept of sex in paradise because they don't believe in God. You know, they just think it's funny. So they just make fun of it. They don't really have a problem with it. Now, the people who do have a problem with sex in paradise are the Christians. They have a major problem with it. They have, I don't know, they have some moral objection to it. In fact, a Christian asked me to debate on this topic, and I said, what's there to debate? You know, I believe in sex in paradise. You don't. I'm not going to try to defend it. I'm going to say, hallelujah, bring it on. Sex in paradise. Yes, please. No debate. But now Christians, they want to insist on this argument. Sex in paradise, you evil, immoral Muslims, how dare you? And that seems to be their argument. Their argument centers around the sex part. You know, it's morally objection, objectionable. That sex in paradise, you know, how? How can you do it? Now, I have a question for the Christians. Are you guys sexophobics? Are you guys... Do you have sexophobia? Are you against sex? I mean, that seems to be the case because you want to center your argument around the sex part. You know, sex in paradise. Emphasis on sex. How can you do it? So what is it? Please answer the question. Do you guys, do you guys have a problem with sex or something? I think you guys are sexophobics then. That's the only explanation. Now some Christians, not some, many, you can go talk to them. Another argument they use is that the reason why sex in paradise is wrong is because you're in paradise, and in paradise, God is there. You know, you're in His presence. You're in God's presence, and wherever God is, you know, it's a holy place. You can't have sex around God. You know, he's, you're in His presence, man. How are you going to have sex there? You stupid Muslim? Damn Antichrist? So, they, they don't say that, but I like saying that for fun. So, that's their argument. Now, that argument makes no sense, and I'm going to show the Christians how it backfires beyond backfiring. And by the end of this video, you're going to see that the Christian has no case. For starters, according to Christian theology, you go ask any Christian, 95% of them will tell you, God is everywhere. He's right here. He's right there where you are. He's everywhere. He's in your bathroom. He's in the strip club. He's in the whorehouse. He's in the red light district of Amsterdam. He's everywhere. So let me get this straight. You Christians, you have a problem with having sex in God's presence, but you don't have a problem with God being in a whorehouse or a brothel. It gets worse. Now, since God is everywhere, that means He's in your house, to the Christian. So when you're having sex with your wife, since God is everywhere, that means He's right in your presence. That means you're having sex in God's presence. Argument over. Argument backfires. Now you have the problem. I mean, God's in your bedroom. He's right beside you. He's even on your bed. He's everywhere. So you're having sex in God's presence. Shame on you, according to your own criteria. It gets much worse. You, you won't believe how much worse it gets. Now, Christians believe that God lives inside them. That's even taught in the Bible, you know. They call themselves the temple of God. My body is my temple because God dwells inside me. That's from the Bible. They are the temple. So let me get this straight. You believe that God lives inside you. So that means when you're having sex with your wife or whoever, when you're having sex, you're having sex with God inside you 
And you want to complain about having sex in God's presence. When you're having sex with God right inside you. Now if God is inside you, that means when you're having sex with your wife and God is in you, that means God is also giving it to her as well, right? That's the only case. He's in you, you're going to her. She, since he's in you and you're going into her, he's going into her as well, so he's in the act as well. And since your wife is a Christian, she has God in her as well. So when you're going in her, you're going in God. And since God lives inside you and lives inside her, when you're having sex with her, God is going into each other. Now how in the world is that not immoral and an insult on God? Ishaqfullah. And you guys want to come argue about sex in paradise, you evil Muslims. I'm not the one who believes that when I'm having sex with my wife that God is in me and in her. I'm not the one who believes that when I get sexually aroused or when a man has an orgasm with his wife. I'm not the one who believes that God is in that as well. You're the one who believes that. And if you feel insulted by that, then that's your belief. You shouldn't feel insulted by this because that's what you believe. You believe God is in you. What have I said is factually wrong? What, what, what is wrong? What is wrong in any of this? God lives in you. When you're having sex with your wife, God is inside you. So that means he's going in her. That means he's in the act. And when you have an orgasm, God is in the act as well because he's in you. So he's in that moment. What part of that is factually wrong? Unless you want to throw your Bible out. That's the only solution. And now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm not being insulting. Many of you Christians, not all of you, but many of you are the ones who always bring the insults to this argument. You're the ones, and you know who you are. You come to Muslims like myself, and you say, oh, you Muslims, you believe in a whorehouse. You believe you're going to go to a whorehouse and have sex with whores. Allah's paradise is a sex brothel. How many times have we heard Christians say that? So please, don't play the offended card. Okay, you're, you're the ones who go around saying whorehouse, brothel. I'm just quoting your book which says God lives in you and God is everywhere. I'm not making any names that's not in your Bible. Okay, I, I'm saying what you believe. So that's that. If any Christian ever comes to you arrogantly arguing against sex in paradise to the Muslim, if they come to you like that, then turn it on them and watch them go silent. Watch them make excuses. But, but it's different. Because it's different. What, 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 what? Yeah, it is different. It's worse. You see, what's different is that the Christian has no argument. I have an argument. Because there are serious theological problems with believing that while you're having sex, God is inside you. In fact, it's almost similar to pagan religions. If you go study pagan religions, you will find that many of them have um, sexual relationships between sex and God. You know, there's like a special connection between the two. And you can see a bit of that in Christianity. You can see a bit of the connection. So either way, Christians don't open up a Pandora's box. And that's about it. So, sex in paradise? Yes, please.